The Marangoni Tyres Gas Sharks Compact Cup may already have been settled in favour of Steve Roberts at Donington, but there's still a lot to look forward to at a wet Cadwell Park. Owen Hunter racing in the um, BMW Compact Cup. You uh, were Saxe Max champion from last year, first time in this championship. How have you found it? Yeah, it's been really good. Uh, it's been all we hoped it to be with all the prices um, being able to keep low, which is one of the main, main reasons we uh, chose this series because we just haven't got the budget to go anywhere else. So, yeah, it's a good stepping stone. Next thing up from Saxmax. Have you found any problems with the car getting used to it, stuff like that? Yeah, we found quite a few problems this year. Through um, We built the car from scratch, so we've got, had a lot of teething problems. But slowly as the year's gone on, we've found all the problems that we've trying to solve all year. But, um, yeah, it's better to do it later than never. So, yeah, got there in the end. And what are you planning for Cadwell Park today? I know it's kind of tricky conditions, but you're hoping for some good racing? Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the wet. I love wet conditions. So, yeah, I'm hoping for a race and see if I can get the best result of the year so far. So, uh, yeah, I just want us to get out there and get some qualifying on. Three races today for the Compact Cup, with each driver getting two outings. The entry is such that the drivers have had to be split into three groups this weekend, and we've got Group B versus Group C first up. So on pole position, Stuart Voice. Next to him will be Alex Tew. In row two, Neil Trotter and Chris Etheridge. Well, Steve Roberts isn't going to win this one because he's not taking part. All set for the off then. The red lights go on. Out they go. Ahead of 13 minutes plus one lap of racing. It's the first competitive action for the drivers here at Cadwell Park this weekend because qualifying was washed out. The grid set by championship standings a little bit of argy-bargy in the upper midfield there but it was Stuart Voice that made the best of the starts to lead the way Alex Dew in second Neil Trotter I think that is in uh, third position Neil Roach seems to have made quite a good start he's got through to fourth this is Scott Lawson car number 84 now he started on row seven of the grid the man from Lincoln and his local circuit but he's losing ground as they head down the park straight for the first time towards Mansfield already Stuart Voice is stretching his advantage that's the 68 car is it Freddie Tatham possibly or is it no it's the 20 car isn't it of, uh, of James Cook just losing a position there to Daniel Kirby whose birthday it was yesterday and that's the change for around about 7th or 8th position I think that's Neil Trotter just ahead of the 33 car of uh, Chris Etheridge who's in 5th so yes it's Kirby in 7th isn't it as things stand at the moment. Stuart Voice then out of the hairpin for the first time. Stuart had a good solid start to the season, winning three out of his first four races. But since then, he's yet to taste the victory champagne. He's been second in almost all of the races, apart from the first of those at Silverstone. But off the circuit there is the number oh, 88 car, I think that is. And there's a spinner just in front of us as well. Shawnee Patterson. Uh, is involved in the car that has spun is number 10 Scott Carruthers who started ninth on the grid but he's dropped back down the order now Stuart Voice continues to lead the way then he's second in the championship and I think he's going to finish that way now with Steve Roberts having already wrapped things up he's got a good advantage here over Alex Dew but Neil Roach going very well indeed in third position in the number 81 car Neil who's had a best finish before this weekend of fifth position he didn't take part at Donington last time out They're making a return this weekend at Cadwell he's not too far behind Alex Jew is he he's giving him a very good run for his money he's had a bit of good news when he signed on this morning Martin Gambling his rival for third in the championship has opted not to take part this weekend the story goes that he's sold his car didn't want to risk any damage on what could have been a, a pretty treacherous track here at Cadwell Park but it's dried a lot out since uh, certainly since yesterday and first thing this morning stiff breeze and a little bit of sunshine does wonders so there's Dew in second position the 27 year old from Oxford this car which was a new build for the 2013 season by Raw Motorsport that's Robin Welsh's concern Robin who was a podium finisher at Brands Hatch at the beginning of the season focus is really on uh, building cars for others Roach here in that 81 machine piles on the pressure and the second place by Alex Dew as a spin into the barriers for number 72 and that's Stuart Place big moment 
But there's already some damage to the front of that car, certainly some damage to the rear of it now as well. So we go back on board with number 84, Scott Lawson. He's right at the back of the field after that moment on the first lap or so of the race. Just trying to climb his way back up the order now. He's got a few cars in his sights. Can he catch them as he makes his way along the park straight now, up towards park corner, the right-hander, first of two right-handers, because Chris Kerr follows on. So he closes up, under-braking on the car in front. And Stuart Voice, though, continuing to lead the race. And from Billericay. Several strong Essex drivers in 750 Motor Club Racing. Neil Trotter has lost out because Chris Ethridge, Chris Etheridge, that is, has gone up to fourth position. A spinner further back, though, in contact with the, the banky on the inside. And I think that's the 16 car, is it, of Eric Zaleski. So he loses ground. He started the race on the outside of row three. James Cook now with Freddie Tatham, number 68, not too far behind him. I think it's um, Andy Waters at the back of that group and the other car involved will try and identify in a moment. Down the park straight they come, yes it's the 13 car isn't it? Which is for our Darver of course who's having a look at the inside there of Freddie Tatham. Andy Waters in the yellow car at the back of AW Tracksport, again uh, someone who's more used to preparing machine but having a rare race outing this weekend as Darva makes a move on the inside of Cook. Final lap then and Alex Dew has not been able to shake off Neil Roach here has he? Neil Roach one of two brothers. Simon will see out a little bit later on from Worcester. It's not recorded a podium finish before in the compact cup. Alex Dew, meanwhile, who's third in the championship, well, neither has he this season. He won the first race of 2012, but he's not troubled sitting at the top step of the podium since then. Several fourth positions this year for him. Looking to go two better here. The Stuart Voice rounds Barn Corner for the final time. He's going to go through to take the chequered flag. So he wins for the first time since Snetterton in May. Second place goes to Alex Dew third place goes the way of Neil Roach a few firsts being recorded here at Cadwell Park today but victory here to that man Stuart Voice we'll see him racing Steve Roberts his arch rival in the final race of the day as the rest of the field comes through let's have a look at the results so Voice, Dew and Roach your top three Chris Etheridge was fourth Paul Hinson uh, a good solid drive from him to fifth position. Daniel Kirby was sixth. And we'll start catch racer Neil Trotter seventh. Then Andy Waters, James Cook, and Owen Hunter up to tenth position in the end from 17th on the grid. Well, after the race, Matt Suckling caught up with our race winner, Stuart Voice. Stuart Voice victory there in the first of the BMW Compact Cup races. A nice, easy stroll for you there. It wasn't easy, it just keep, I always try and beat myself up and keep on pushing, so I just keep on pushing and uh, when I do say a mistake I always uh, keep on telling myself off, so just, it's good to have a win, yeah. Alex G, great second place for yourself there, but you had Neil Roach all over your tail. Yeah, no, it wasn't easy, uh, not at all, there wasn't a stroll in the park, uh, once Stuart had got away, uh, it was pretty much second and third, I was just concentrating on holding position, keeping everything neat and tidy, watching all the wet and uh, offline, online. And I sort of knew where he was really quick. I could sort of just cover the bases because obviously the wet around me. Um, but overall, really happy and more happy just to keep it on the track considering the conditions today. So. And you're, you're also trying to wrap up third in the championship. Yeah, no, I had a bit of a surprise when I found Martin and Gambling wasn't there, who's been chasing me all year. And to be fair, has been probably the faster man out of the two overall. But, you know, you take what you can get. And uh, I'm happy with today and happy to obviously get to race more than anything. But yeah, it's brilliant. Well done, Alex. Cheers. Thank you very much.
Welcome back to Cadwell Park. Time now for race two in the Marangoni Tyres Gas Shops Compact Cup. Group C versus Group A. So Alex Dew is going to have pole position for this one. The champion Stephen Roberts next to him on the grid. Chris Etheridge and Kevin Denwood, row two. Eric Zaleski and Simon Roach on the third row of the grid. We should have 21 cars starting all together, but uh, Mark Bennett is missing as the lights go out. The race gets underway. 13 minutes plus one lap is the journey once again. Good start by Roberts from the outside of the front row. Gets ahead of Alex Dew straight away. Kevin Denald in that bronze and blue car trying to go around the outside of him as well. Don't think that's quite going to work though. So they head up towards Charlie's for the first time. So it is Roberts from Dew. And then it's Denwood that has got into third place. Chris Etheridge down to fourth position as they turn their way now through the second part of Charlie's and down Park straight. Someone running a little bit wide there. That was. Etheridge but he doesn't lose too much momentum looks like Simon Roach is in fifth position and a queue of cars a little bit further back as well they're going two and three abreast as they go up the hill towards Park Corner it's a narrow circuit Carroll Park can they all make it safely through the right hander at the end of the straight a little bit of locking up going on further down the order I think it's all shaped out okay though there goes number 28 Dan Kirby in the opening race he had a top six finish can he replicate that form in race two soon find out he's running p6 at the moment just tucked in behind Simon Roach and just ahead of Colin Bysouth as well who started eighth he's already made it one place to seventh position look at this though it's side by side between third and fourth place men now so Chris Etheridge trying to get the place away from Kevin Denwood who's got the inside line trying to go around the outside as well is Simon Roach on board with Dan Kirby oh and they're leaning on each other and off goes Simon Roach he goes for a spin Kirby can go through on the inside but actually the, the brush was between those two cars ahead of him. Colin Bysouth capitalises on all of this as well. So he goes up to what will that be? That'll be fifth position, won't it? So there's the leader, that's Stephen Roberts. There's the second place man, that's Alex Dew. It's all happening behind though. I think Kevin Dunn was picked up a bit of damage there maybe. He's in third place. Etheridge fourth, Bysouth fifth, Dan Kirby is sixth. And Simon Roach down to eighth position, so he's got a bit of work to do now. Simon Roach yet to have a compact cup podium. His brother Neil had one in the earlier race, so you'll know what he'll have his eye on in the two remaining races today here at Cadwell Park. He want to at least match that achievement. As Etheridge and Bysouth are running absolutely side by side through Charlie's. Inside line for Etheridge, but Bysouth, who was on the podium at Brands Hatch at the beginning of the season, gets his car through and he's up to fourth place now. Long drag up the park straight. Looks to me as if Etheridge has got no response at the moment. Onto the brakes they go. Kevin Denwood just up ahead of us in that 55 car. Kevin Denwood coming into this weekend was fifth in the point standings. The grid, of course, for today's race is determined by point standings because we couldn't have a, a timed qualifying session. The floppy markers there has gone for a Burton. Meanwhile, down the hill, look at this three car, four car battle for third position. Denwood by South Etheridge and locking up there on the inside line the white car of Dan Kirby with the red wheels if it makes it through Simon Roach has got back up to seventh position as well may well be Farad Darwin to, has lost out because of that but look at this nose to tail left then right as they climb the mountain past the grandstand shortly you go into the hall bends past the cafeteria here Kirby goes this way and that trying to find a route through past Chris Etheridge but Etheridge is driving a wide car on quite a narrow piece of tarmac here down to the hairpin Kirby tries to throw the car up the inside but can't make that work it's now five cars battling over third and by south just chucked one up on the inside of Kevin Denwood there and he's made it work a good move that from Colin by south to get third place away from Kevin Denwood but Denwood's going to fight back now as they head along the start and finish straight he's got the inside line for the next corner which is Coppice the left-hander meanwhile off goes number 23 into the barriers goes Andrew Cunningham from Newbury a little bit of light damage maybe but he'll be able to rejoin the race hopefully not too much damage that's going to pre prevent him from uh, continuing to the chequered flag here bits dropping off that car as he goes so uh, maybe he won't be too much longer for this race now by south has extended his advantage in third position hasn't he this is the view from Dan Kirby that's Simon Roach is off again and almost takes uh, another car with him 
it's uh, Dan Kirby that we're on board with, but Simon Roach is having an eventful contest here, hasn't he? He's not going to be emulating his brother in this one. Freddie Tatham late on the bricks, but he gets through on the inside of Shawnee Patterson there. Number 88, this is a bit further back down the order, just outside, in fact, the top 10. Back on board with Kirby as they go into Hall Bent once more. Has it settled down a little bit in this scrap? Maybe. Oof, but Kirby working hard. And again, he's going more speed into the hairpin. Oof. Side by side with Denwood, but I thought that Kirby was just going to carry too much speed in that time. In the end, he had to get on the brakes. He's lost a bit of time to Denwood because he couldn't carry enough speed out of the corner. So there's Bystow third, Etheridge fourth, Denwood fifth, Kirby sixth. A couple of other cars departed from that battle, of course, including the 14 car of PJ Darvett. So there's Kirby. Number 28, another driver from Essex, Steve Roberts. This has been absolutely typical of his drives this year. He's a quarter of a minute ahead of everybody else. On the final lap now, Alex Dew has not been able to offer any resistance whatsoever. He's having a lonely old in second place as well as it happens. But Stephen Roberts, the financial controller by occupation, back into racing last season with the Compact Cup, having been a Formula Ford champion almost a decade ago now. Really enjoying his racing though. And the Euro Motor Parts entered BMW 318 Ti. All of these cars compared to a very tightly controlled set of regulations of course which just goes to show what fantastic ability Stephen Roberts has to win the championship in the way that he has done. He's about to go on to his final lap now is the uh, Jim Carolan car, I think that is. But Stephen Roberts takes the chequered flag, and it's yet another win for Roberts. It's his 11th of the season. And that tells you all you need to know about his domination in this race because there is Alex Dew in second place and just coming through in the background now. You can see uh, Colin Bysouth in third place, just behind the uh, slower lapped car, I think that is, of uh, Kevin Robbs. Let's get a look at the results then. Steve Roberts takes the win by almost 18 seconds from Alex Dew. By South third, then Chris Etheridge fourth. Kevin Denwood fifth, Daniel Kirby sixth. Farad Darva, Eric Zaleski seventh and eighth. Farad Darva and uh, Andrew Partridge making his debut in the Compact Cup. He completed the top ten. No surprise that the fastest lap and the lap record went to Stephen Roberts. And after the race, Matt Suckling caught up with our winner. Steve Roberts, another victory for you. I think that's your, your tenth now in the Compact Cup, but it's a, a good winning margin again. Yeah, um, just keep pushing. Uh, really enjoyed that drive. Love Cadwell Park, especially in the dry. I was actually in the Allcomers race yesterday in the wet, so that gave me a wet driving. Um, and our car seems to steam up in, in, in the wet. I, I struggle with visibility, so this morning I was not looking forward to the races, but it, the sun seems to come out and it's a totally different circuit now. So, yeah, I really enjoyed that. You managed to uh, wrap the championship up at Donington Park. Uh, it's nice to come out here, relax, enjoy the racing and just pick up another win. Exactly that. I mean, I tried to approach the championship so I was, you know, not getting too het up about it and try and concentrate on race by race. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, I can come here now and just enjoy it. And that's exactly what I did. You know, I, it's a great track, Padwell, Cadwell Park, and it's... It's kind of almost like a rally track. It's almost single file, but there, there's so many, so many different sections. There's fast sections, slow sections, and I just really enjoy driving it. Alex Dew, second place for you there. Just like in race one, not a bad weekend. No, no, I've got a lot to thank uh, every one of my sponsors, LED Lenser and my dad for doing all the uh, the work through the uh, the winter and obviously into this year. It's been a long process developing the car, uh, but thankfully we've sort of got to a point, um, and then hopefully build on next year where we can uh, sort of hopefully progress a bit further up and uh, maybe take a, a win by the, uh, some, at some point next year. Not great conditions now for the showdown between Stephen Roberts and Stuart Voice in the final race of the day for the Marangoni Tyres Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Group A versus Group B. Kevin Denwood and Neil Trotter line up on row two. Simon Roach and Neil Roach on the third row of the grid. Lights on then. On a wet track now, the race gets underway. We had a nine lap race earlier and I think we'll be back down to an eight lap race in much more difficult conditions now. Great start from Steve Roberts, up to second has gone Neil Trotter. 
and Stuart Voice, who we were hoping was going to give Steve Roberts a real good run for his money here, down to, I think, third place. It looked like he might briefly go down to fourth, but there's contact further back and a spin-up. We'll pick up who that was in a moment, but that's going to open up a big gap in the middle of the pack after the first four or five cars. It's Colin Bysouth that's gone spinning around, but I've got the feeling that there were other cars involved in that as well. We'll see who those were, possibly, if we get the chance of a replay in just a moment, but certainly Steve Roberts leading the race. This is on board with Simon Roach. Now, he started on the inside of the third row of the grid. His brother, Neil, got a better start. So did Colin Bysouth from the row behind him, it seems to me. But, no, nope, Simon, I think, could hold fifth or sixth position going into Coppice Corner. And then what happened? Ah, he's getting out of shape ahead. It was Kevin Denward. He spears across the track. Bysouth spearing to the left-hand side of the circuit in avoidance. This is what it looked like from Colin Bysouth's point of view. Oh, and yes, he had to change his line to avoid Kevin Denwood's car that was heading straight towards him. And actually, I think everyone can count themselves lucky that that was not a much bigger accident through Coppice and Charlies for the first time. Neil Roach, Neil Trotter, and then Simon Roach, I think that is. Yes, it is. Third, fourth and fifth, is it that? I think it possibly is, because... Steve Roberts leading from Stuart Voice now. On board with Simon Roach. You can see difficult conditions here. Wipers going into the trees. I'm sure it's going to be dry or wetter under there, to be honest. Possibly you'd think the trees would hold the moisture through the woodland section of the circuit. But you can see a definite glistening sheen on the tarmac where the rain has fallen later on this afternoon here at Cadwell Park. The mini Nürburgring, as this Lincolnshire circuit is known. So it's Roberts leading, Voice is second. And then it's Neil Roach in third. Neil Trotter fourth, and Simon Roach in fifth position. In the last race, Simon Roach, in the end, was a non-finisher, unfortunately, after a couple of mishaps. So we'll have to try and emulate his brother's earlier podium in this one. we we'll have to beat his brother as well if he's to do it this time. It's his brother's blue car a little bit further up the road. Down the park straight they go then, you can see the return leg to Mansfield. Which on the right hand side of the picture there as he made his way up. Not great visibility now for Simon Roach as he goes on the brakes for Park Corner. And at the moment unable to find a way through. Of course with the wet circuit now, it's very much more difficult uh, offline to try and find an overtaking opportunity. That said as well, Drivers might need to be finding different lines to get that little bit more grip. Usually you look for the outside line a little bit more to find a bit more adhesion. Neil Roach in third, getting away now from Trotter, former short oval racer. And Simon Roach in car 65. Cars past the old club circuit timing box. Which is when the shorter configuration is used here at Cadwell Park. Well, these days the majority of events do take place on this full 2.1 miles layout that incorporates the classic section that they're on now up the mountain and into the hall bends Colin Bysouth is on a recovery mission he had that off to at the second corner in avoidance of uh, the big moment for Kevin Denwood all more moments ahead of uh, Colin there didn't quite catch who that was that was uh, exiting stage left Certainly uh, Bysouth managed to keep out of trouble. A podium early on, he'll do well to get a podium finish here as well. Bysouth, who in the early part of the season had two podium finishes at Brands Hatch in the opening meeting of the season. There's still Roberts voice, then Neil Roach, and then Neil Trotter and Simon Roach. They get back to sixth position. And it's a decent fight actually going on behind. We'll maybe try and pick that one up shortly. Trotter, who has gone well in the championship this year, coming into this meeting, he's sixth in the points, thinking that will have exceeded his expectations at the beginning of the year. Trotter in car number 12, has had a handful of top sixes as the year has gone on, but has been quite consistent, and that's all important, such as the point scoring system in the Compact Cup. There's the number 48 car of Andrew Partridge making a one-off appearance, a bit of a tryout this weekend. Hopefully we'll welcome him back more regularly in 2014. Stuart Voice isn't giving up. 
on victory here, is he? He really wants to score one last success over Steve Roberts. He's not done so since Snetterton way back in May. He'd dearly love to do it in the final round of the championship at Cadwell Park. It won't make any difference as far as the points are concerned. But uh, it would be a, a little one up to him at the beginning, at the end of the season. As spinning around is Paul Hinson. That was the after contact or before contact with Andy Waters. A little bit of sport there. As look at this, the top two are almost locked together now as they make their way through Barn Corner. Roberts and Voice are going to go on to start another lap. Neil Roach still there in third position, doing a very good job of staying with the top two, actually. Conditions are really to his liking this weekend. Maybe the car has been set up just right for them. Changing conditions here today at Cadwell Park. Can be a little bit of trial and error, unless you really know what you're doing with the preparations that you make before the race gets underway to adapt your driving style as well of course towards the back of shot you can see the number 11 car of Colin Bysouth continuing to make up ground he's side by side with number 47 there that's Owen Hunter the reigning Sax Max champion and Bysouth can go through so down a position goes uh, Owen Hunter on lap number 6 of this race so Bysouth goes up to ninth place now how far can he get? On board with by South we go. The car ahead is number 14, which is PJ Darfa. And the two of them are going to get side by side now as they go along Park Straight. By South claiming the line for Park Corner here. And I think he's going to get it done. On, onto the brakes they go. Owen Hunter ready and waiting should there be a coming together to pick up the pieces. But now I think by South has, has he made it work? Darfa was trying to fight back there. As we watch number 55, Kevin Denwood, with uh, no glass in the passenger door mirror of that car now. Is that a legacy of the earlier? Off as off the circuit goes Scott Lawson. Now, where on earth is he going? A long way off. That was uh, the gooseneck. He's almost heading back towards Park Corner, I think. Another moment, and it's Jim Carolan who spins. Going to get back onto the circuit and yes, just uh, manages to avoid that car that was coming through behind him. But uh, Jim Carolan have to try and get that car restarted. Oh dear, there's a pheasant heading across the track. The driver's jinking to avoid it. Oh, but no, sadly, they've not quite made it. And I think it was Scott Carruthers that uh, did the unfortunate deed there. I don't think he'll be worrying too much about that now because he's got Colin Bysouth looming large in his mirrors. Just ahead of him is James Cook. That's the battle just outside the top five positions at the moment. Sixth, seventh and eighth in actual fact, I believe. By South, having come through from virtually the back of the order. Can he find his way past his two rivals here in the closing stages of this race? You know, flags for another incident, possibly that that involved the car that went a long way off. Scott Lawson, side by side there. And it's Carruthers that gets ahead of Cook and By South tries to follow through. So up to sixth position now goes Scott Carruthers, the pheasant killer. Steve Roberts there is the leader of this race still. Stuart Voice has tried very hard. He's not had a cast iron overtaking opportunity that I have seen. But he's run Stephen Roberts very close. Roberts knows he's been in a race this time, which hasn't always been the case this season. They make their way down towards the hairpin for the final time. Roberts is going to come out in front. Well, he had 10 race victories coming into this weekend. He scored another early on. He's going to make it 12, and the driver's best 12 scores count at the end of the season. So it's going to be virtually a perfect score for Steve Roberts. He comes up to the line. He takes the chequered flag. Steve Roberts wins 12 from 14 races in the Compact Cup season. Stuart Voice runs him close in second position and uh, Neil Roach is an excellent third who's going to be fourth? well it's Simon Roach he can't quite match his brother's achievement Neil Trotter is in fifth and there's the sixth place man coming through Colin Bysouth in seventh I think that's as far as he's going to be able to make it in the end stream of cars still battling for position further back Greg Barlow in the 50 car the yellow machine at the back of that group They all get over the line. Barlow completing the race in 13th 
position but the win went the way of Steve Roberts but he and Stuart Voice both waving to the marshals on their slowing down lap but celebrating at the end of a good season for both drivers last few cars coming through to take the chequered flag there that's uh, Andrew Cunningham coming through in 14th position 15th went the way of Andrew Partridge well Kevin Denwood not used to seeing him this far down the order but he had that off on the first lap and he finishes 16th confirmation of the results then Roberts winning by less than a second from Stuart Voice Neil Roach in third Simon Roach in fourth as far as the championship is concerned Roberts won the title he finished on 608 points Voice on 582 due in third on 516 with Martin Gambling not here this weekend finishing in fourth on 490. Neil Roach you managed to get to the podium for the final round of the year two out of two for today. Yep couldn't ask for any more it's just a perfect brilliant brilliant end of the season. <laughs> and these two ahead of you they've been pretty quick this year but you tried to keep, keep with them which you did. Yeah well if I yeah if I'd had a better starting position then I think I might have been a bit closer but probably still them two in front. <laughs> It's been a tremendous season in the Marangoni Tyres Gashox Compact Cup and Steve Roberts has been a very deserving champion. More cars are promised on the grid for 2014, so it should be one to look out for. We'll see you then. From all of us here for now, it's goodbye.